Here's a quick video on blaster maintenance and repair, especially for spring-powered blasters. This is the Calibrum platform, but a lot of principles will apply to the Talon Claw and Rainbow Pistol and other platforms. To test the air seal, so you, when you know you need to perform maintenance on it, you'll notice the air seal has decreased, and you can test that by priming the blaster, plugging the end with your hand or your finger and firing it, and the speed of the plunger can pretty much tell you how fast or how good your air seal is. If it's a good air seal, it'll move slower, and if it's bad, it'll move faster. That didn't really stop or slow down much at all, so the air seal had some work to do. We're gonna want to access the plunger tube to clean it out and lubricate it, so we're gonna take off the nut on the top threaded rod and pop out the two takedown pins if you have the takedown version. If you do not have the takedown version, you're gonna want to undo the nuts on the back of the blaster and undo the butt of the blaster in order to act as a plunger tube from the rear. But the takedown, talon claw and caliber can come out in the middle so you have easier access. So you have it split in half, we'll look at the front half. You want to take a paper towel and wipe down all of the dirt and accumulated grime that have appeared on the o-ring. We'll go ahead and wipe it all down, clean it up nice, and a lot of caliburns will have their shock pad fall off, like that one. So over time, you lose your adhesion, especially with the uh, lubricants and dirt will eventually uh, wear out the sticker or the adhesive on the shock pads. And so you can replace it with another shock pad, or you can also just super glue the old one on for a more permanent fixture. If you need to, sometimes the O-rings will just wear out over time because of the dirt. You can just replace your O-rings. All of our assembled and kits come with extra O-rings that you can replace. We also have O-rings on the ramrod core for both the caliber, which is optional, and the talon claw, which is included by default. You just replace those O-rings. You should have plenty of O-rings with the kits. Um, and wipe those down. And then you want to lubricate those O-rings. It helps for the um, air seal in the barrel. You should always use a silicone grease or other lubricating agent that is not petroleum based because that can deteriorate plastic and some O-rings over time. You especially want to avoid aerosols because they contain additives that also deteriorate your O-rings. So you should really only use um, silicone or other PTFE plumber, plumbing grade uh, grease. We like Super Lube and Odis and other plumbing greases all work well. And that's what we recommend. If you've got Amazon, Lowe's, or Home Depot, most common stores will carry some sort of plumbing grease. And you just go ahead and lubricate the O ring on the O ring notch and the O ring on the base. And a lot of calibers also have the screws and the ram base loosen over time. So, what you can do if they're just worn out and stripped and you can't tighten them, is you can actually swap them and rotate the ram base 90 degrees to use the other set of screws which are holding on the ram core. Or you can also just upgrade to a ram base that's machined made of aluminum or acetyl so your screws won't loosen up or if they do loosen up your bars won't wobble as you can see there's some play in the core and if it's if it shifts up too high or too low it can get stuck on your either your barrel or your mag well and not prime all the way forward but the uh, acetyl bases the donut bases have a slightly smaller pocket which allows less play. So that's it for the front half of the blaster. If you want, you can test the air seal of just the front half by plugging the end of the ram base with your finger and blowing into the end to see how well the air is retained and it shouldn't leak when you do so. That one seemed pretty good, so we're good to go with the front. Also, when you're setting down your blaster, you want to avoid setting down your O-ring that you just lubricated and replaced in you know, the dirt or anywhere where you can get grime on it. So I like to set it on the edge of a table to allow the O-ring to stay protected. For the back half of the caliber or talon claw, you will have, usually the magwell will get in the way, and if you want to do a thorough clean, you'll also take out the lower magwell and the plunger. What you can also do is take out the plunger tube and also clean that out. Same thing, same process as you want to make sure you get all the grime off, the accumulated dirt. And if you're using a 3D printed plunger or 3D printed parts, in general, sometimes the repeated forces of the spring on them can eventually break them away and 
you'll have small pieces of PLA break off, and usually it's from the inside of the plunger. Um, on the inside of the spring is hitting on the inside, you can actually eventually wear away that plastic and you'll have little bits of debris in it. That's normal for PLA. And so what we recommend is replacing your plunger um, regularly or also upgrading to a machine plunger in acetyl or aluminum. That gives you a better seal as well because the, the 3D printed plungers, depending on how you print it, they'll have tolerances that can vary quite quite a lot on where the o-ring is seated and so that can give you a leaky seal or if you print it with um, default wall thicknesses you can have small gaps between the layers causing air to leak out and so a single piece machine plunger is a little heavier but it makes it so the tolerances on the o-ring notches is more consistent which gives you a better air seal. So then I got some debris again from the, the destroyed plunger. This is probably a year old. I got inside my plunger tube so I want to wipe that down. I would even maybe consider taking this apart to wipe it down more thoroughly or spraying it with an air compressor. So I cleaned out any, I cleaned out most of the debris from the back tube. Um, I've also wiped down my plunger, get all the little bits of debris, you'll see the little specks of dust and this blaster being stored in our shop, got a few just chips and dust on it, so I'm going to wipe that clean, replace the o-ring with some new ones and then apply some lubricant. I usually apply the lube to the plunger tube itself because you can only get so much on the o-ring itself and as soon as you put it in all that lube will tend to stay in one spot. So what I like to do is apply some lube to one end of the plunger tube and get it a little wet and put that in the back end so we have lube in both the back end and the front end. You also want to wipe off your spring because it can get a lot of dirt on it. Then put everything back in. I like to do it this way so it prevents dust or dirt from getting on a plunger tube as I'm working with it so I avoid setting the plunger tube down and I can reassemble it all in one go. So now the lube is somewhat in here and a lot up on the front as you're uh, doing maintenance and fine tuning on your blaster to adjust the rod length to make it easier for next time, or maybe upgrade your parts to get an older model. You also want to make sure you go through and tighten all your nuts so you'll have nuts being held on by this butt plate that you'll just unscrew. So you can see the top rod is barely being held on and I have plenty of room in this butt plate to move the threaded rod back to give me more room. I want to unscrew the nuts unscrew your rear butt plate and then tighten down all your nuts. We like to use a socket or a socket wrench to 3 8 size to tighten down these that can loosen up over time to help the blaster retain its rigidity. And then you can put the back plate back on. Uh, put it back together, nuts are tight, put the front half together, and a lot of times caliber is easier to reassemble with the magwell assembled together as one unit and then slide it onto the rear half. If you 3D printed your RAM base and the fit is loose uh, and you loop it up and it's all clean and it's still not giving a good air seal, a lot of times you can tell if the O-ring is not sealed on the plunger tube right based on how much contact there is. If you can tell that the O-ring isn't seated well, then you can go through and wrap a layer or two of Teflon tape to widen the O-ring slightly if your print is leaking at the RAM base, which is where a lot of the leaks can come from, either the RAM base, the plunger, or your RAM core and barrel. So we're gonna work on the seal of the RAM base by wrapping it in a layer or two of Teflon tape. Or you could use a machine RAM base to kind of never have to do this. If you do wrap it, the wrapping will usually wear out and you have to redo it every once in a while. We need a, a tighter fit in the plunger tube. Make sure the O-ring seats in the plunger tube properly, it doesn't get squished on one side, so it helps to push it in as you're pushing the RAM base into the plunger tube. Looks good. And as kind of a 
unofficial check for the O-ring wrapping is you can see the O-ring is pressed along the inside of the plunger tube, and now this is our seal. It's a little bit, not much, but that's the plunger. So, if you want to check, the plunger looks like there are, there are a few gaps. You can also wrap the plunger in tape as well as a tuning procedure. Much better with just the machine oiling. It's still leaking from somewhere in the base. I did not lubricate the RAM for O ring, so that's probably where it's leaky at. But that's a lot better. So the fault was mostly in the plunger, it looks like. Good to go. Also, if you're tuning it up and you notice that your Milan coupler has broken, you can replace it or add these aluminum inserts that reinforce coupler which makes it pretty much indestructible at that point. You just insert into the inside and provide aluminum reinforcement when the pin goes in so it's much stronger. Also when you're cleaning and maintaining it, depending on how rough you play, you could get dirt in the barrel so you can just take a paper towel or a small cloth and clean out the inside of your barrel or you can get an actual gun cleaning kit with a long rod and run that in and out of your barrel to clean out the extra dirt and filth. If the front wobbles on you, which is pretty sturdy, you can tighten the nuts in the front too, or upgrade to carbon fiber or aluminum spacer tubing, which I have done here. So there is a video overview of tuning a blaster, kind of testing that air seal. And that's fairly good, not perfect, but that's definitely a competitive seal.